my students have had some really weird Zoom callback auditions, you know, people eating their lunch or not coming on camera, you know, things like that. So you have to go into a Zoom callback just knowing, you know, with confidence and not letting anything get in your way and knowing before it could be weird. Odds are it probably will be. Thank you so much for joining us. Today we have the amazing, the spectacular, the red-headed Marcy <laughs> Smolin. Let me tell you about Marcy. Marcy is an actor, a comedian. She is a director. She is also a fantastic acting teacher, and we're going to get into that. So please help me welcome Marcy Smolin. Hey, Marcy, how are hey, you? Hey, Lydia. <laughs> I'm so happy to be here. So... Uh, first of all, I just want to start off with um, talking about your background, how you started okay. in the business, because you started as a child actor. I did. I did. I grew up here in Los Angeles, and when I was in school, uh, I mean, I always knew that I wanted to do this, but somebody came around and they were doing a TV show, a local TV show on KTLA, and they were looking for kids. Uh, it was called Career Ways. And we would act out different jobs with adults. And I was sort of an interviewer and an actor. And I was like 11 years old. Oh, that's amazing. So then once you did that, how did you uh, keep it going? What, what prompted Well, you? I got an agent through that. You know, my parents, you know, of course, didn't want me to, but I begged. And uh, got an agent and, and did a lot of commercials. Mm -hmm. And... Um, and then when I went to college, I took a break and which everybody said, Oh, like my, my ch children's age was like, no, don't do that. Don't go to college, you know, but I have no regrets about that. College is amazing. I went to Cal State Northridge and then UCLA and then right my final show in college, there was an agent in the audience and that was my adult grown up agent. So I got really lucky. That is awesome. Yes. You know, everybody told me not to take a break, but I truly believe that you need to, to educate yourself and nurture yourself and do what you need to do. And the work will, the work will happen. And you started, um, training early as well. Yeah. So tell me I about your first with acting Lorraine teacher. Cuddle. Yes. She was an old timey actress and it was on La Brea. And uh, there was a lot of, you know, uh, all the kids in the neighborhood went. And uh, she she had that kind of a put on voice and she smoked the whole time. That's one of the biggest things I remember about her. She smoked with a cigarette holder, like a long cigarette holder. I thought she was fabulous. Not that I condone smoking. And she wore like, scar she was like the ultimate crazy acting teacher, you know? <laughs> and she wore scarves and jewelry and perfume and she had little dogs and as i'm talking i'm thinking i've turned into her but... <laughs> <laughs> she influenced you greatly uh, yeah and you know it was amazing we would do these little shows that she would direct and i i loved every minute of it and that's where i started oh that's beautiful and and yeah. you also studied for, with some very iconic teachers i did tell us i did Stella Adler, my, we were we were bonding over that before yes. you started selling. Stella was the. She uh, was, I, I, everybody <laughs> should have had a Stella. Everybody should have had. Well, I named my dog Stella Adler, so there you go. That's how much <laughs> influenced me. But we had a rocky start because my first uh, day of class, we had to bring in a monologue, and I I was eighteen years old, and of course I did my monologue that I won the drama festival with in high school. And I thought, I thought I was all that, you know, and I, I, uh, I started crying and, uh, you know, and, and, and everything on stage. And all of a sudden she stood up, she stood up and she went, stop it, stop it. And she <laughs> threw a paperweight at my head. I was like, what? It almost hit me. And, uh, and she said, don't ever take a crap like that on my stage again. What the heck was that? She started screaming at me and, uh, uh, you know, telling me it was all put on and I had to get real. And I was like, oh, I hate you, Stella Adler. <laughs> but then, of course, I grew to love her because 
that was that was the real foundation of who I was. It was true. She was right. You know, I was taking a crap on the stage. It wasn't fake and put on. And then, you know, she makes you work really hard. It's hard work. Yes. Yes. And she she hated young women. She she was she not a fan of ingenues at all. Well, to be honest, I was never an ingenue. <laughs> <laughs> well, but you were young. So I was young, but always therefore, a your youth um your youth intimidated her. So Yes. Yeah, but yeah, she yelled at me too. But I was like, Okay, okay, it's okay. Yes, yes, Stella, yes, Stella. I was like, Yeah, you can yell at me all <laughs> she you was want. Scary. I don't care. I'm gonna stay here. And I I remember uh, in those classes how the beginning of the class, when, when, the, when the season would start, the place would be packed out. The theater would be packed out. And by halfway through the, the, the class, you would lose about half of the class. And towards the end of the class, you, might, you were lucky if you had 15 people left because they all got afraid of her. You know, because here yeah. we are in Hollywood. But you know what? Yeah, she was right, though. Because it is scary. Yeah. It's scary up there. And here you we are. Stuff. Yeah, and here we are in Hollywood where people just want to look good. They don't really want to do the hard work. And she was coming exactly. from, you are going to do the work. So exactly. It, it, exactly. it kind of uh, scared a lot of people. I remember, you know, at the time there were actors who were, a series regular who dropped out of class pretty quickly. You know, they thought they were coming in and they were going to be the shit. And she <laughs> brought them down to size so quickly that oh, they did not return. she didn't care who she brought down to size. Yes. Equal opportunity. Unless they were young, good-looking men. Then she yeah. loved them. Then who she could be was, her driver. Uh, kind and generous to them and and you know, bring them close Clarity. to her. <laughs> yes, she turned into a young she lady. Was a, yeah, they're a totally different person. Absolutely. So you studied with Stella. I studied with her. I studied with Viola, Viola Spolin. Wow. Who, uh, yeah. Uh, when I was a kid, again, they came to my school and, uh, you know, she wrote the book Improvisation for the Theater and she is the mother of improvisation that we know today. I'm really aging myself right now. Where did you and go to school at? Melrose Avenue Elementary School. Oh, wow. Could I be more local? John Burroughs Junior High and Fairfax High School. Wow. Everybody came there to find young actors. Oh, that's amazing. And then you also studied with Stanford Meisner. I did. Also didn't love young women. <laughs> but it's okay. You know, I learned. I learned a lot. I learned a lot from him. You know... Um, I loved a lot of the teachers that I studied with. I learned a lot of technique from them, but I also learned things that I personally don't do as a teacher, which I think with every experience, you learn good things and you also learn things that can make you grow in a different way. You know, for example, as a teacher, I don't, I try to come from kindness first because I truly believe that you need to know where your strengths are first and then the other it's it, you know it's more comfortable to grow once you feel comfortable and you develop some confidence as an actor then you start getting in there and digging on the other stuff i don't really like to tear people apart i think you're coming from an actor's uh perspective in that yes. you know what it is to be an actor 24 yes. 7 you know what it is to be a performer as a stand-up you know how sensitive, how fragile the ego can be. And so you come from that place. They're, you know, at that time, they were old school. They, they were. They, they were not sugarcoating anything. You know, if, if you breathe wrong. I remember Stella yelling at me because I sat, I sat wrong, just sitting, watching her. And she came at me. She says, do you think this is the beach? This is the theater. I was like, you know, uh, you know sit up straight. I, oh, my goodness. But that's that's where they came from, you know. So, uh, Lorraine Tuttle, my first teacher, you also had a cane, and she used to smack you on the back if you were 
slumping in your chair, she would come and smack you. Can you imagine doing that today? <laughs> You'd be arrested. I would not smack anyone ever. <laughs> well, you would also be arrested. You'd be on TMZ. They'd be talking exactly. about Exactly. Well, that too. Yeah. That too. You'd, you'd be all over the internet. Somebody would have taken a, a, a little uh, selfie of you hitting somebody and you'd be exposed. You have to be careful about everything. You have to be so correct about everything. Not that I would ever hit anybody, though. So. No, that's not you. I would hit somebody, but that's not you. <laughs> <laughs> so what, what are a couple of things that you learned from these iconic teachers that you bring into your teaching? Guess what? I've got this fabulous little bundle just for you because you are fabulous actor. I got it for you. So what do I got for you? Let me tell you what I got for you. I got the PR cheat sheet, which every actor needs. You need to know how to do your own PR until you get that job where you can pay for a PR person. Then I have the 12 step audition. That's another cheat sheet. You know, sometimes you get freaked out at auditions and you don't know what to do. Well, my 12 step audition cheat sheet will help you and guarantee that you will slam your audition every time. And the third thing I got for you is the casting sites. I have a list of casting sites so you can go and just submit yourself for that next big part. How does that sound? It sounds good, doesn't it? From Stella, I would say that my biggest lesson it sort of comes from what she wrote. It, well, I bought her book and I had her sign it, you know, oh. after a lot of us battling and, and fighting. And she wrote, your path will be longer, but your pot of gold will be rich. Mm. That's and, you know, what she was saying is, you know, you're not a beauty. <laughs> uh, you know, I was, uh, I've always been a character, um, but, you know, she knew that I, 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 was willing to put in the work and and you know I did it's true I had to you know convince a lot of people that I was worth it and and I think that I got that tenacity and that strength from her also from her uh, I would say that what I take to my teaching as well as my acting both is be real find the truth you just said something that made me think of stand-up because um as a stand-up, you have to come and tell the truth. On some level, you've got to show up, and yep. you've got to be courageous, and you got to hold your truth. Absolutely. You know, the, the stand-ups that people respond the most to are the ones that have a voice, know who they are. And that, that goes for stand-up, and that goes for acting, or writing, or anything artistic, really, even as a, a painter. So what did you learn from uh, Meisner? You know, I personally don't love the Meisner technique uh, in whole. I, I don't love a whole Meisner class because I guess what I learned is that no one method solely is right for any one actor. But the things that I took from Meisner and that I, I bring to my classes are I don't like the long repetition exercise and all, and all of that, but um, one of his beliefs was your choice is there within you. And you, sometimes you, the, the reason for the repetitions is you, you unlock it, you know, you find it, you find it, you find it, you find it. I am a big believer in rehearsal. I am a big believer in doing it again. Even when I self tape somebody, when we get the, for, I, I say it's funny when I say self tape when I'm taping them, but when I tape somebody for an audition, I always, when we get the perfect one, I always go, let's do one more. Because sometimes when you 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 really feel like you've gotten that one, you're sort of free to maybe find a new one that might also be really interesting. And from Viola Spolin, um, you know, I went on to study the Groundlings after that. Um, when I was an adult, but she's the mother of all improv, you know? So I feel really grateful that I got all that technique from her really young. That's amazing. Know. Yes, and <laughs> Now, what made you go from acting into stand-up? And you started early as a stand-up. 
I did. I have to. I used to have to come in through the kitchen at the improv because you know it was a bar. It was the you know the little nerdy, somewhat bullied kid in high school. Braces, glasses, poncho, plugs. You know <laughs> everything that could go wrong. Chubby. Um, uh, you find out how to survive, and mine was through humor. And you know. My father thought it was because he used to give me my bottle to uh, Johnny Carson to the Tonight Show, <laughs> and that it was in me. So that's a good story. I like that story. You grew <laughs> up with with Johnny Carson. When we started doing comedy, I think it was different. It was a different time, you know. There are co young comics today that do comedy for the reasons we did it. For we had to, you know, we had to do comedy. It was in us, as opposed to just getting discovered and doing five minutes and putting it on TikTok and, you know, um, it was the love. It was a smaller base. It was a smaller group of us. Yeah. I don't know about you, but stand up for me was really an acting class. It taught me how to act better. It, it taught sure me how to be present. It taught me how to anchor myself in myself. And it taught me how to validate myself and not, uh, you know, my my favorite uh, thing to say is be the thermostat and not the thermometer. And that's what stand up taught me was I to like be that. the thermostat. You know, I set the tone, not the audience, because I, I would say probably the first couple of years, I let the audience dictate how my show would, would go. If it was a hot, you know, if the audience was hot, and I came on and they gave me love. Woo, I was on. But if I came on or I had to follow someone like Arsenio Hall or or Andrew Dice Clay, the audience are automatically hated me because they wanted more of whoever that big name comic was. And I would die a slow death. And I remember one time I, I, I followed Arsenio and he was still in the back That's at the tough. comedy store. Yeah, he was still in the back at the comedy store. And I thought he was the most generous comic ever because he just said, keep going, do your material. And that really helped me a lot to just uh, take the stage because I hated following people like Paul Mooney. You know, it was like, I didn't oh, have that Paul skill Mooney, set. Man, that was some magic. I didn't have that skill set to follow. Uh, you're big great people. though. You know, you're so, everybody loves you so much. I, I know this is off topic and you can stop me if you want, but I remember being at the comedy store the night that you went into labor with Lexi. Oh man, it was. And, Every we were all there waiting for the phone call, and all the comics <laughs> on stage were talking. Do you know this? No. Everybody was talking no. about it. No, you know we were all waiting, and nobody left until we got that. You know, the oh, that's call hilarious. Thing. But that's you know that was those. That's my memory of back in back in the old days of comedy. Yes, we yes. Family. Well, we were family. Well, also it was about craft. Again, we the connection between acting and craft, stand up yeah. and craft. Today, it's a different, um, it, it, there's a different energy. People think they could just get into acting and, and become a star because they're on YouTube or they're on a TikTok. social media platform. And yeah. it, it, it's, it's a very um, disheartening thing that's happening, I think, you know. You uh, know, the, the, uh, with everything, there's upsides and downsides to it. If you are an actor who has worked on your craft or and a writer and a comedian and you have a lot to offer and you have a lot of content, it's a great way to get it out there to the world, an opportunity we didn't have when we were younger. Yes. Uh, you know, but unfortunately it also dilutes the, the playing field. You have uh, young, young wannabe actors getting on on the platform talking about how to cry, how to cry, uh, or how to memorize uh, your lines in two hours. And, and it's like, why are you doing that? You don't even know. How, how can you uh, teach something you don't know? There are, there's groups on Facebook and 
I, I really should stop looking at them because they make me want to just where it's, you know, actors for actors and, you know, they're posting monologues of themselves and uh, it's just, and you know, no giving technique. each other really bad advice. And no technique. Something no technique. I, something I heard None. you say um, in an interview and, I, and, and it, it reminded me of it, so I want to talk about it. Why don't you like actors directing each other? Oh, yes. Um, in my classes, I, I do most of the scene work within the class. I'm, I rarely send it home. I rarely send it home for a few reasons. Um, and I'm constantly proven right on this when I loosen up on that and, and assign things for home, you know, a people get flaky and they don't meet, you know, meet with their scene partners, but also, um, you don't know when you're working with someone, you know, what their experience is, where they've come from, what their their level of, of experience is. And sometimes actors directing other actors can give, they can give each other really bad habits. So I like when actors rehearse together. I like when they find things together. I love when they talk about the scene and and their background and, and their history together and the characters history together and what they want from each other. Those are all things that actors can do when they rehearse together. Don't direct each other. Yes. I think that is a, a faux faux pas. Speaking of, of that. So when you have students in your class, do you hand them the scene and they go and look it over by themselves and then they come back and then they work on it? No, no, I usually have them go rehearse with each other. Um, with the, they all know how I feel about that. <laughs> you know, and when, when someone is new, I sort of tell them, or, you know, the students who've been in my class for uh, a good amount of time are, are very happy to tell somebody, don't direct me. <laughs> don't tell me what to do. Um, and, but, you know, like I said, there's other things that they, they can come to together, working together. Because if you don't have connection with your scene partner, you, you don't have anything, you know? So I like them to connect. I like them to discuss the relationship. The relationship is key. Uh, I like them to feel like they've come to a point together with the scene. And then they do it, and then I direct them. So, okay, I'm going to ask you... What would you tell an actor the process is for rehearsal? A young actor who doesn't really know, what, what would your maybe three, four tips be when you are rehearsing a scene? Here are, these are the key things you should work on. For, uh, for an audition, for a class? Well, or... let, let's start with a class. Okay, so if you're rehearsing with a partner, what is our relationship? What's the location? Location is key. We're different people in different locations. We're not going to do the same scene in a library that we do if we're in a haunted house or uh, if we're in a romantic location, you know, if we're in a restaurant um, or if we're in the middle of Dodger Stadium, you know, location is really important. One thing that I know this is, this is stepping away from your question a little bit, but one thing that I I really notice that a lot of young actors do a mistake they do is they will get a script and they'll go, where are my lines? No, read everything, everything. A script is a roadmap that leads you to where you're supposed to go with that scene. You know, from interior Dodgers, I mean, a uh, uh, bathroom at Dodger stadium day, you know, not that you want to be seen in that location, but, uh, you know, to the action, you know, what are they doing? You know, Lydia is, is sitting in a chair looking at Marcy, like she's maybe talking a lot. Marcy's thinking, oh, wow, look at Lydia. She's looking at me like I'm talking a lot. <laughs> and then my line is, maybe I should take a break for a minute, Lydia. <laughs> you know, you have everything. Right. Um, it, you know, there's stage directions. Don't ignore what's in parentheses, you know, sadly, angrily, things like that. Also, read it more than once, yes? Yeah. So you want to read it 
at least five times so you can really start to understand and maybe even look up some of the words that you're not familiar with. Look up everything. You know, um, we have a great thing at hand now called the internet. I don't know if you've heard of it. <laughs> <laughs> Where if you don't know how to pronounce a word, someone's going to pronounce it for you. Yes. You know, it's it's great. There is really no reason to not know anything in a script because you can look everything up, especially if you're auditioning for, you know, a medical show or a legal show or, you know, where there is so much terminology there, there it's, it's really bad to go in an audition for Grey's Anatomy playing a doctor and, and get the medical terminology wrong. That is so jarring. And you have the opportunity to arm yourself with everything now. But I guess going back to some tips to rehearse, uh, you know, with your partner. Um, so what's our relationship? Where are we? What do we want from each other? You always want something. You know, I'm sitting here. I want you to listen to me right now. I want you to like what I'm saying to you. That's what I want from you. You know, a scene is often just a, if you break it down, two actors getting what they want, two characters getting what they want, and moving towards that. I love that. Um, and that then is... you can get into backstory. If they're a, if they're if it's a relationship where they've known each other a long time, what is their backstory? You know? Yeah, no, that's all important. If they're rehearsing for an audition, how would they rehearse that? You know, get yourself a, a group of friends, of actor friends, who you can call each other. Uh, I have my students, I they all do this now, you know, they 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 read for each other in self tapes, you know, they, without directing each other, they read for each other in self tapes and they, you know, whoever they're going to self tape or have as a reader, you know, it's really good to rehearse with that person. Um, but the one key thing is if you don't have someone to read with while you're rehearsing, do it out loud. Things sound different in your head than they do out loud. It's very important to rehearse out loud. Because, you know, you, you look at a script and, and in our head, we're brilliant. You know, we're always brilliant in our head. And then the words come out and, and you don't want the first time you do it out loud to be in an in-person audition, which is rare at the moment, you know, or on your, your self tape or in a callback on Zoom, you know. So out loud, rehearsing out loud is important. What are three mistakes that actors make when doing self-tapes? Oh, three? <laughs> well, you can go as, as, as many as you want to oh, share. Oh, don't get me started. This is a big, this is a big, uh, I have a lot of thoughts about this because it's really easy to make a good self-tape, but people don't do that. So technically, background, lighting, sound, camera, you can, you know, film on your phone, just hold it horizontally, um, shadows, you know, step away from the wall. It's, it's simply that simple. You know, when you're doing a self tape, if you're close to the wall, it's going to be all kinds of shadows. But if you're a little further away from the wall, there's not as many shadows have a, a darker background, never a white wall, never, 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 never. Worse than a white wall is, you know, patterned or, you know, in front of a door or get yourself, if you're an actor who's doing a lot of self tapes, it's really easy to, um, and I can send you links if you want. Oh, that um, would be that, great. Oh, yeah, yeah, that would be great. I, I, I have a, I have a, I have a, actually a whole set of links that I, I sent out to my students because you can do it really cheaply, you know? But get, you can get yourself a little studio that you can break down, a good tripod, some good lights, and a good background. Do a sound check. As far as a reader, here's a huge mistake that people are making. Don't do it, don't do it, don't do it, don't do it. Always read with someone. There's even an app right now with, that allows you to record your own lines so you can do them back. No, no. Don't use yourself as your reader. The person doesn't have to be there. I, I read for people all the time on Zoom because just put me behind the camera, you know, on your computer. You need somebody to act off of. You need somebody to react off of. 
So that's that's the number one no no for me is read with someone. Number two, bad lighting. If they can't see you, or if it, the lighting is so jarring. Number three, again, good sound. They can't hear you. And rehearse with your reader a few times. It's again, it's that immediate thing we're talking about, you know, where where people think I'm just gonna put it on tape and it's gonna be brilliant, you know? Immediate, immediate, immediate. Should they memorize? So I don't, this might be controversial. I don't think it's absolutely necessary. It's it's with self tapes, people have been feeling the, the need to memorize. I think you need to be so careful that you're not looking down at your script. Um, but I think it's okay to not be completely memorized. Um, when at in-person auditions, I used to always tell people, bring the script in with you. Don't necessarily look at it, but bring it in with you because when you have the script, they're expecting a reading and you can really blow them away. But when you come in memorized, they're expecting a performance. And when you're doing callbacks, either on... Be memorized. Okay. And self-tape yeah. as well? Yes. Very good. A lot of callbacks are on Zoom, and and um, this is foreign for a lot of people. And Zoom callbacks, I mean, callbacks can always be stressful. Oh, man. I My students have had some really weird Zoom callback auditions. You know, people eating their lunch or not coming on camera, you know, things like that. So you have to go into a Zoom callback just knowing, you know, with confidence and not letting anything get in your way and knowing before it could be weird odds are it probably will be sometimes it's not <laughs> so in the self-taping process sometimes actors are not confident about doing their own self-tape and they'll go yes. to a studio um yes. what are your thoughts about that um sure just if you're someone who's auditioning a lot, you know, that can be expensive. Um, I think for actors, sometimes it's good to go. I, I, I take people at my studio. I, I coach them too. So I coach them, you know, if it's a series regular, you know, and you have four scenes that you need to put on tape, you should work with a coach, you know, and, and uh, so we'll do one scene and we'll really work on it and then we'll tape it and then we'll do another, you know what I mean? We'll yes, just, we'll, we'll yes. focus one scene at a time. Um, but there are self-tape studios where you just go and you pay by the minute and they put you on tape and, and you know, give you the, they don't direct you or anything. And um, that's good. You know, it um, to save money as an actor, if it's one or two lines, you know, mm -hmm. or four lines. Yeah. You you don't want to pay more than you're going to get paid as an actor for every you know every self tape. You'll go broke. Yes. So weigh you know the importance of it, and it you know like you said, if it's one line, easily you can do it at home. Very good. Um, you started um, when you started uh, teaching acting. Yes. You started with kids. Is that how you? you started no, or I started with comics oh wow okay well that's not true I mean it is true but to go back all through college I taught at uh summer camps I was a camp counselor and I was always the drama counselor and then when I graduated college I was on work study at a place called professional artist group which I don't did you ever go there it was on I highway. remember them it was a great place. They had acting classes at night. They had all these big sound stages. And uh, Carolyn Berry. Yes, I remember her. Who was my dear friend, the late Carolyn Berry. Bless her heart. Um, she she started the place. And it was an amazing place to be as a young actor. And the way that I got into teaching kids there was there was um, a children's department there. And I got assigned to be the assistant to the guy who was running it, Kevin McDermott, wonderful man. And he left a professional artist group and opened a school called Center Stage LA. And at that point I was already teaching like with him at professional artist group. So he asked me to come with him. So I did, 
for a few years, I taught with him. I was really, you know, I was like 20, 21 years old and I was teaching little ones and there was kids in that class that are huge stars now. It's kind of funny to think about it. But then I left because I was doing stand-up. But all the time on the road when I was doing stand-up, I was coaching the other actors. And there's a lot of managers that would call me like when I was on the road with someone, you know, <laughs> they knew that I had also taught acting. And so, uh, you know, I would, I would run people's auditions with them and I, I would do all of that. And then I got in a really bad accident. I was knocked off a 20 foot ladder and I was in a wheelchair and I couldn't do stand up. I couldn't, I, and I was feeling really sorry for myself. And one day I was sitting at home and I get a call, uh, you know, hello, can I speak to Wendy? And I go, oh, sorry, you have the wrong number. And the guy paused and he went, wait a minute, is this Mercy Swollen? And I go, <laughs> uh, yeah. And he goes, it's Kevin McDermott. Wow. I just, I was, I was just, you're still in my phone book. I'm calling the wrong number. Um, cause I'm looking for someone to coach for tonight. Do you still teach? And I went, I have been in a long time and I'm in a wheelchair right now. And he goes, well, you don't have to stand to teach. <laughs> and my mother drove me to center stage LA, which he still had at that point. And I taught a class and I was like, oh my God, I'm home. This is what I love. And I started teaching for him. And then he sold the studio. Wow. And it didn't, the person who bought the studio, I don't want to really get into that, but it didn't work out with her. And so Kevin was able to acquire it back. And he said, but I don't want to have a studio anymore. Would you like to go into business with me? So we went into business together. We changed the name, the actor circle, which was starting its 20th year. In oh. January, oh. And, um, oh, and then five years in, th about four years in, Kevin, I bought him out. He didn't. He really wanted to go do other things. He went to Europe. He's producing, you know, children's television shows. He's doing great things. Uh, I I owe him a lot. He's a wonderful person, and he taught me a lot. That's amazing. So that's the story of the origins of the actor circle. And now we, I teach kids. And, but a lot of my kids grew up and still wanted to, to work with me. And, um, I actually teach more adult classes than I do kids classes now. Let's talk about teaching kids because I, I, again, going back to love social that. media, I see so much misinformation for yes. young people. So when a, a, a young person wants to get into acting and take an acting class, what should they look for? There's a terrible thing that goes on right now. Um, so I want to say this to if any parents are watching this. Your kid's not going to get a career by being discovered in the mall. There are some acting schools that have talent scouts. And they approach parents in the mall. Equal opportunity, every kid they see, basically. And then they bring them down. And they, it's these expensive programs, you know, I mean, thousands upon thousands of dollars and, you know, we're going to make your kid a star. You don't need any of that. Children in an acting class, what you should look for, first of all, is someone who your child responds to and is not afraid of. Meet them, you know, and have your kids meet them. It's really important. And... Um, they need to learn audition technique. They need to learn a lot of improv because uh, it's it's amazing to me how many uh, kids are not taught improv, which you do a lot in auditions, uh, you know, a lot. Um, you know, and, and scene work. And what you don't need is a uh, someone who says they're going to make your kid a star, we're going to get you this, and we're going to get you an agent. And we're... Bottom line. Kids grow up. Children's agents are always looking for kids. It's, it's not really that difficult for children to get an agent if they're good. So get an acting class, get good pictures. You don't need, you know, a talent scout. With that being said, when, when you have gotten new actors, they've never done it before, 
what are a couple of uh, mistakes that they make coming in? Are you talking about children or children? Adults? I'm talking about children first. Uh, this is for everything. Everybody it goes back to what we said: how to re how to read a script. Don't read the stage directions out loud. You'd be surprised, you know. Um, but the thing when I work with kids, I have to educate the parents as well, because a lot of parents come in and they don't. They also don't know anything about the business, and you're you know think about the fact that they're um, you know they're helping their kids with their auditions. They're doing all of that. So. It, for me, it's equally important that I spend time educating the parents. That's good. That's good. What are some of the the problems that young actors face that older actors don't face? Some people don't know how to deal with children. Uh, there's there's directors out there who don't like kids, you know, or don't know how to relate to them. So much as I was saying before about you know, the, the, like the zoom auditions or, you know, auditions where, you know, things aren't going right. Kids have to ultimately feel that they've done their work on their end and they know what they're doing. And they, they have, a, have to have a confidence about that because they are going to be in situations where there are people who don't know how to work with kids, don't respond well to them won't give them what they need so they have to learn how to develop it on their own and and while we're at it older people who come in to act and they've never done it before what should they be paying attention for as they come in Reading oh, the script that's, book, yeah that's but... a, that's a lot because you know it's, it's funny like i said i've had the studio for 20 years i've been teaching longer than that and i i feel like things have evolved with social media and, and everything. And as we talked about earlier, people aren't as concerned about having technique and they need technique. They need to learn cold reading. They need to learn improv. They need to do scene study. They need to know what to put into a script, how to, how to analyze it, how to do their own work and, and work with a partner. And they also just need to do it for a while. You know, I will have someone be in my class for three weeks and say, do you think I'm ready to have an agent? Well, the answer will always be no. Even if you're naturally good. Let's stop right there for a second because I, you just hit something that I am, uh, that, that I believe actors should study at least, at least a year, at least yeah. a year. And if they, and if they're itching to get out, go do extra work, you know, so you can be on set, but study. Well, there's that, but that's a, that's a good, that's good advice. Um, if one way to get yourself used to auditioning and giving yourself a platform where if you really screw up, it's okay is student films. Also a really good way to get a body of work for a demo reel, little indie, you know, projects that aren't big projects you don't want your first auditions to be for steven spielberg you know actors again have a whole resource you know actors access la casting casting networks now i guess um uh student films i am a big fan of them get the script do the auditions build a body of work build that confidence in uh, self-taping for student films you know um it's a great way to educate yourself while you're in class getting technique. That's awesome. Yeah. Combination of the two. Awesome. What have been some of your joys teaching? Oh, well, everything. I love it so much. Um, I love when you see the light turn on in someone's eyes, you know, when, there's that moment where they come in, maybe it's someone who's really new and they're really scared and they fall in love with acting. Or the moment when someone's been uh, hitting their head, hitting their head, and all of a sudden it's the night when they have a huge breakthrough. We were doing this exercise this week where I play music as a soundtrack um, behind the scenes as a, a tool to open yourself up and unlock emotionally. There's always a lot of breakthroughs on that those nights. 
and so I'm just I'm just coming off of that week. Um, so and then of course you know when they work when I watch them on TV when uh, and films. I have actors who won huge awards and I cry like a baby every time. Like they're my children. They're all my children, always. I love Even the it. ones who are older than me. I love it. I, I wanted to talk about you as a performer. Okay. What moves you? You know what I mean? Because you're, you're very generous. You're very different. Um, you're a very different type of teacher than most, you know. Uh, there aren't, not all the acting teachers out there are, are teaching, are working professionally. They're teaching, um, they're sending students out, but they're not doing it. And I find right. as an actor, having taken a bazillion classes with so many people, that the teachers who are working as actors tend to be more generous, more compassionate, and more giving. It's hard sometimes because because I love teaching so much. I will take long breaks, you know, where I'm not working. Um, but then I also have periods of time where I'm working a lot. Um, sometimes I, I do step back because I'm so involved in, in the studio. And I, I also want to give that and my students a lot of focus. Um, currently... Uh, I'm creating a lot of content, as you know. Yes, I love it. I'm, I'm on there on TikTok um, following you. <laughs> uh, it's very fun. But again, you know, creating your, I believe in creating your own content as long as you've put in the work. Yes. Um, we, as again, again, actors have, um, and comedians and writers and directors, we do have more of a platform now. But you have to put the work behind it. I don't believe in just slapping things up there. You know, put the work in. You do it. You put the work in. Yes. Um, well, because I was it. trained differently. You know, I think we were, we're old school. We were trained differently. We, right. we, we are about preparation. It's yes. about preparation. It's not about, okay, put the camera on. I'm just going to, I'm just going to rant. It's a different time, I think, right now. The uh, thought is just do it and then grow as you do it. Right. But we came from a period where you would you would be crucified if you went and auditioned and, and didn't read your sides and weren't prepared and didn't know uh, all your information. You know what? That's still not going to work for anyone. You know, it's preparation, 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 preparation for audition. And also... Look at the big picture of your career. What's happening to a lot of influencers? They're creating their own content and then people are noticing them, but then they don't have the technique to back it up. Uh, have you watched that show Reboot yet? No, not yet. Uh -uh. Oh, it's great. It's a great show. And it's so funny. I was laughing out loud. And it's, it's so timely for what we're talking about because it's, it's a shows about... Um, a reboot of a sitcom from, you know, 15 years ago or 20 years ago or whatever. In the reboot, they have a new character and, and they do the table read and this actress is horrible, horrible. <laughs> and like, who is she? And, you know, she was an influencer, had a lot of followers. So they thought they would hire her to be a main character on a sitcom. That's not going to work, you know? So I love that they touched upon this in this show. I was like, yes, yes. You know, there's actors out there who think, well, I'll just get famous on TikTok or Instagram and then I'm going to be a movie star. Well, if you don't have the technique to back it up, it's going to tank. So you you have to look at the big picture of your career. Again, I'm I'm all for creating content as long as you're growing with it. Absolutely. Becoming a good actor. Yes, yes. And working on your craft, be it filmmaking, be, be it stand-up, whatever, writing, to, to really work on your craft and knowing that this is a marathon, not a sprint, right? Exactly. We, we are in it for the long haul. Even though we didn't know it back then, we were preparing for the long haul. Right. You know, because yeah. I think back then, I, I know for me, it wasn't so much about being a star. 
it was about, I, I was so happy to be an actor. And it was like, you wanted to deliver the goods. You know, for me, it was important to be able, if I was doing something on camera, to hit it in one take. You know, that was always my thing of do all your work now. So when you get in front of that camera, you get it in the first take. And if they do other takes, it's just a bonus, but, but you're ready. Well, that's another thing that actors need to learn just to veer off again when you're on set. You're never just going to take once because there's camera angles, there's lighting, there is a master shot, there's close-ups. You have to be consistent with your work. So there's another reason to make sure that you have strong technique. You have to know what to do when they say action. It's so crying on cue. We, we oh, talked about okay. this um, uh, on the phone the other day. And that I see a lot of young actors getting on uh, YouTube and talking about how you can the light. hit, hit, uh, you know, this is how you can cry on cue. And I think it is such a disservice to, to actors to tell them you can cry on cue. You know, if, so I want to know your take on it because I think it's bullshit, but, um, uh, okay. Well, this is what I, will always tell my students. You don't have to worry about creating the water. You have to worry about creating the emotion behind the tears. So, you know, there's always ways to put tears in your eyes on camera. That's not your, that's not an issue. But if that, if they, if they, you, any technique is used to put the water in your eyes and there's not the, the thoughts, feelings, and emotions behind it, those tears won't look real. So focus more on why you're crying and not the creating of the water. Couldn't be put better. Very, very good. Very good. Because I, I, um, I think as actors, we worry about things that are not important. You yeah. know, like I know actors who've been doing it a long time and their, their uh, big complaint is, I don't know how to cry on cue. And I think that's got to be taken off the table. It's like yes, be I in agree. the scene, be in the moment. You don't always have to cry. Yes, we know that in the parentheses it says, and the act, you know, the character cries. But sometimes it's more provocative when there aren't any tears. You know, don't cry for yourself. Let the audience cry for you. You know, yes. I, I think that's a better, you know, it's like you're struggling for something. You know, you're you're working towards something. If tears come out, they come out. If they don't, they don't. You just want to be real. Yes. You want to be authentic. You want to be real. So going back to kids, because I, 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 I feel like you are such a wealth of information for young people. Not only did you have you taught kids for a long time, but you are also an excellent uh, acting teacher um, and, and excellent for kids. And I can speak out of experience because my daughter was uh, in your class for a period of time. And I just You're remember, I just remember the wonderful um, way you taught the kids that I thought was so, um, it, it was so profound. You respected them. You treated them like human beings. You weren't talking at them. You were, you, you uh, enrolled them into what you needed them to do for themselves. I think that children are not all that different than adults. Um, one of the great things about children is they are open and honest and don't have a, as much scar tissue as adults do. So teaching them how to tap into all of that and you know, as you know, the the best tool that you have as an actor is the life that you've lived up until this moment. So, um, you know, they haven't lived as much life as we have, but emotions are emotions. You, you know, if you're six and your parents won't let you have a toy and you've cried in your bedroom about it, those tears are as strong as if someone is, you know, adult, someone is, broken up with you or whatnot emotions are emotions whatever causes us to feel them we feel them so let's talk about auditioning for disney 
as opposed to auditioning for uh, a Nickelodeon, as opposed to auditioning for Netflix? Is there a difference? Um, well, Disney and Nickelodeon, no, not really. It's, um, you know, know your genre. If you are auditioning for a show, watch them. Know your genre. Your acting style is going to be different than if you're auditioning for a horror film or a soap opera or, or you know, a, a, a sitcom. There are adjustments that have to be made. And Disney and Nickelodeon, I think they've grown a lot. I, I, I think that the content that they're creating now is, is much more real than it, it used to be. And I, I mean, really, I'm sending kudos out to Disney and Nick because uh, the scripts I see and what I've been watching lately, um, I think the kids are much more real and relatable. And uh, I love that they're doing that. But they are still gearing towards kids. So they are more upbeat. You you are you are much more upbeat and cheery and, and high energy than you would be if you were doing a show, you know, a, a nighttime drama. Know your genre. Study the genre. When you get an audition, really figure out the genre. That's another thing that you need to look at is the genre. It's important. I think that's that's the best information. Study the genres, study the the TV shows that you're going to be auditioning for, know what the who the main characters are, know um, how the show works so you 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 can adapt. Right. I think that's really important. All right. So, I want to know what what do you think your superpower is? Ah, that's a big question. I can look at anything and make it with my hands, so that's a good superpower. Uh, as far as an acting coach, I think that my superpower is to um, I can I learn to know people and I I treat them as individuals. Love that. Every actor is different. Every human being is different. We all feel things differently, and um, that's why going back all the way full circle to what we talked about earlier, no one technique is right for everyone any one actor every actor has to put together a toolkit you know i i use i respond to this i don't respond to that i love doing this kind of improv i you know i i when i need to cry i do this when i you know we 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 learn all different things and so that's why i teach a combination of things one of your favorite stories um, of something that happened to you as an actor or as a stand-up? First went back to acting after college. The first job that I got was on, you know, one of those courtroom shows, of course. And uh, it was uh, Superior Court. Oh, my goodness. And <laughs> my, my role was I was playing a woman. Her name is Manny, and she was a cook in the state prison. And uh, I was marrying, I fell in love with a prisoner named Lloyd. And uh, uh, we got married in the judges' chambers. And I'm like 20 years old, you know. I have to marry this guy, and then we have to kiss at the end, and then they car they put handcuffs on him and cart him away. And, I, you know, I'm going, Lloyd! Um, but the actor's girlfriend came with him. And right before we filmed the scene, she grabbed me by the arm and she said, I don't want you to kiss my boyfriend. I go, what? She goes, I don't want you to kiss my boyfriend. I will be watching you. <laughs> I don't know why they let her be there, but right when they said, you may now kiss the bride, I'm looking over to her him and we hear, uh, 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 and oh my God. She's like, <laughs> so yeah, that's a crazy one I'll always remember. That's hilarious. Um, well, um, that, does that mean you didn't uh, kiss him? <laughs> I know I kissed him. Oh. <laughs> uh, <laughs> before they took him away in handcuffs. All right, I'll tell you my favorite stand-up story, but I'm not going to tell you the name of the stand-up who okay. is involved. Um, there was a very famous comedian who... Um, 
when you introduced him and brought him on stage, if he was going on after you, um, he didn't like you to touch him, like shake hands. You know how sometimes when yes. you're like, yes. you're introducing the next comedian, like as you'll go off stage. Yes. Okay. So um, I had to, one night I had to introduce this comedian. I mean, I, I did my set and I finished. We were, uh, it was, it was a taping of some kind. I think it was a telethon. And, um, but it was at, it was at the club. And, uh, so I knew I had to introduce him. So really in my mind, like, as I'm finishing him up, like, don't shake his hand, get off the stage, get off. And she liked you to get off the stage before he got on the stage. So I finish, I introduce him and I'm like, get off the stage, you know, in my head <laughs> and my shoe got caught in the stair and I was wearing a really short skirt too. And I fell off the stage and my leg like got caught on the stair of the stage so I'm bleeding everywhere right and I I still I'm like uh oh I don't I, I, I don't want him to be mad so I'm like crawling down the aisle he doesn't even notice he walks past me and he steps on my hand so I was like ow I'm bleeding now this comedian stepped on my hand and I I I got almost to the end and I heard someone in the audience go, I don't think this is a skit. <laughs> <laughs> so that, that's a memory for that's me. That's hilarious. Okay. What do you want your legacy to be? A lot of really good actors. I want my legacy to be that I can be proud of everybody that I've taught whether actually whether they're really good actors or whether they just love acting that's so generous as you are oh well thank you yeah that is that's a very generous uh legacy to want to have if you love this interview check out the next one coming up now <laughs>